welcome back to Simpsons Reference, featuring Simpsons Hit and Run Part Simpsons. When we last left off, a spinning newspaper exclaimed, Bart Simpson disappears in bright light, family pleads to light, give back our boy! Okay, so where were we? Right, right, right. Okay, so we are now controlling Lisa as we kick off our rollicking adventure to find out if her brother Bart may or may not be dead. Bart's a very important character to the overall story, so we need to follow up on any clues that may lead to Bart's location. If anyone wants me, I'll be in my room. Yes, yes. As you can plainly see, we are now in a new district of Old Springton and we're treated to a pleasant setting sun, which actually kind of vibes with Lisa a little better than the first two neighborhoods. Now, I have to be honest, you honestly don't do anything different as Lisa as you would the other members of the Simpsons clan. You're stealing cars and murdering people left, right, and of course, center. I guess the only difference is her selection of cars, but given that we're now on our third character, a bit of tedium is setting in and it just feels like a missed opportunity to have them play, you know, differently. This is something that the later Simpsons game did very well, I'm actually praising EA here. Hello, operator, give me the number for 911. Lisa could use Buddhist prayer and concentration to move things with her mind and to solve puzzles the others could not. It could even go further beyond by transforming into her ultimate form, Clobber Girl. Man, if you could combine the special moves and art style of the Simpsons game with the open world mayhem of Hit and Run. Whoa! Anyway, walk around and take in your new surroundings. We have the Docs, Krusty Studios, Professor Frank's Lab, and of course the Android's Dungeon, which is our first objective. We're entering a comic book shop here, people, so plug your noses and get ready for some gatekeeping. First things first, talk to comic book- <laughs> no. We're changing our costume first, of course. I mean, Lisa could use some new threads. So what do we have? Ah, cool, Lisa, the one where- like, you know, whatever. As well as a bunch of pieces of plastic, a Vec orange, she wore to represent the Sunshine State. That's, um, doing pretty... Oh, and who could forget that one time where she was super good at hockey? This goes without saying, but I'm pretty sure we all know the correct choice here. Alrighty, now that we're looking prim and proper, let's get this show on the road. I need to find my stupid brother. Have you seen him? Yes, yes, can't talk now. I must get the last copy of the new Itchy and Scratchy Adventures comic. It's the controversial issue in which they finally kiss. Assist me, and I will aid you with your dilemma. Drive down to the docks and grab the Itchy and Scratchy comic so we get told what to do next. Now, can you tell me if you've seen my pointy-headed nuisance? Silence. I must get this comic into a Mylar bag before it deteriorates into near-mint condition, heaven forbid. Perfect. Seems like CBG is going to dangle the whereabouts of a lost child a little while longer. He needs you, well, he, he doesn't need you, but he needs to drive himself back to his own store before he's ready to spill the gooey pizza rolls of information. Now to get this inky treasure into its Mylar sanctuary. What about Bart? I asked you, have you seen him? I think I saw him at the Noiseland Arcade. Ugh, video games, what a waste of money. Now to go online and bid $1,000 for itchy and scratchy corncob holders. A terrific, terrific expense. So, the Noiseland Arcade. Ah, such a fun location that never got nearly as much play on the show as it should have. Sorry, Donkey Kong, you're just not a draw anymore. <laughs> Hey, he still got it. Let's get into the life-sized Malibu Stacy car, one of the best in the game, mind you, and drive on over to said arcade. I think this is as good as time as any to mention Hit and Run soundtrack, which is one of its best features. Each character has their own associated soundscape, with Homer's being very indicative of the show, Bart's being a bit heavy on the metal, I guess, which felt a bit weird, and Lisa's relying heavily on the Saxophone. I think with the sax being so integral to her character and being an instrument you hear in all 87,000 episodes, it's a real charmer and just makes you feel like a lot of love was put into the game. Unlike, say, you know... You couldn't scare me on the scariest day of your life if you had an electrified scaring machine. 
Oh, that was uh, fun. Before we hit up the arcade, first hit up the Bolarama to get this collector's card. Uh, I mean, expertly jump without fail to get this collector's card. Uh, make sure to edit out that really embarrassing jump, please, thanks. Doing this will net you Bart's soul from the classic Bart's soul episode. Roll the clip! Well, finally, a little luck. <laughs> I, I know that has nothing to do with the item in question. It's it's just the best moment of the episode. Finally, we are now at the arcade and find not Bart, but one Millpool Van Houten. Millhouse, has Bart been here? Uh, I haven't seen him. Hey, can I buy you a frozen yogurt? I'll throw in two dry toppings or one wet topping. Bart's disappeared. You have to help me find him. Well, he might be at Wally Weasel's. He likes the smell of the ball cage. Alrighty then, Wally Weasels it is. Now I remember this Chuck E. Cheese stand-in from that episode where it's Bart's birthday, but it has to be in more. I, I just can't remember it. I said I just can't remember it. Where, where are they? Bob and Henry? Talking Simpsons? Did they say no? They're, they're done? Oh, alright, fine. Now, at Wally Weasels, we find... Millhouse? What are you doing here? Lisa, what a coincidence! Hey, is that a new dress? No, I've been wearing this dress for years. Now where's Bart? Uh, I think he's at the Planet Hype. Okay, Planet Hype. A timely reference to the long-forgotten Planet Hollywood. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, hi, Lisa. <laughs> Fancy meeting you here. Stop following me! Uh, I heard Bart might be out by the Springfield sign. Perhaps you'd like to share some chewing gum. Uh, the Springfield sign? I... Hi, Lisa! My, your hair looks pointy today. Millhouse, have you seen Bart or not? So, Lisa, do you have a date for the Harvest Dance? This is not a good time. It's never a good time! <laughs> always hung out at the Quickie Mart. Maybe Apu has seen him. And with that, the saga of Millpool not getting the hint is closed. And that's the end of that chapter. Okay now, so the Quickie Mart, huh? Well, let's drive over there and... Well, what's this? An observatory? How very incredibly exciting slash nerdy! What's inside, I wonder? Ah, Frank's base of operations, I see. Not much to do around here, though, other than... Willie killing himself? Who's Willie now? Okay. Back on task! The Quickie Mart, right, right. Oh, a collector's card! <laughs> Okay, there we go. Ah, what a classic. All right, everybody, all together now. That'll plan. Lisa needs braces. That was great. There's got to be some more cards around here. It's, oh, and I keep trying to avoid Apu stuff, but we got to move forward. Meanwhile, or like five minutes later, we're now at the Quickie Mart, but we're not because there is no Quickie Mart on the map. So Apu is just hanging out near the Krusty Burger. Oh, this is terrible. A very bad man is delivering roadkill to all the Krusty Burgers, which are cheaper than my Quickie Dog. Ah, ah, so Apu is angry that someone else is selling bad meat. Ah, let's just do this. After collecting 15 dead skunks, which Lisa should really hate, <laughs> that was pretty cool, but doesn't, we have to drive back to Professor Frank's Observo Lab that we were just at. Now, considering Frank was the last person to see Bart alive, maybe we should have started with him instead of comic book guy. Eh, whatever. All right, Frank, spill all those juicy brain clues. Professor Frank! Professor Frank! My brother Bart is missing! Have you seen him? Well, let's see now. Um, Bart helped me build a monster and then disappeared in a bright light. Wow, this is crazy. I need someone to talk to who's wise and learned. 
Okay, so Lisa thinks the next logical course of action is to speak to someone wise and learned. And since she doesn't know anybody like that, let's find good old Abraham Simpson. I guess he's all the way back in the retirement castle. Oh, he's right outside. Grandpa, can you help me find Bart? He's missing. Maybe I'm just a senile old man, but Bart's lucky red hat fell out of that black car. Wow, Grandpa, what a great clue. You showed why senior citizens are valuable members of the community. I think my baby teeth are growing back. That's why I had to punch that nurse. I better use something big if I want to take that car out. Like that school bus. <gasps> oh no, wait, we're not going to. I no longer fear hell because I've been to Camp Krusty. <laughs> awesome, let's go. All right, so we're here. Doesn't look too bad. Now, where is Mr. Sponge? Sponge! Ah, there you are. Otto, I know I'm a little young to be asking this. Look, I don't have any special brownies left. I ate them all. But do you think I can use your school bus? Oh, <laughs> right, cool. Meet my price and she's all yours, little lady. So we need this bus to battle the evil dark sedans. And I, I'm sorry, but Lisa's driving a bus. Now, yeah, there's a few instances of Bart driving under special circumstances, but nowhere in the show did Lisa ever, God damn it! Upon destroying the last mysterious car of mystery, Lisa exclaims, <gasps> It's empty! What's going on in this town? And that spurs her to drive to Mr. Burns' casino. I mean, what a great underrated location to include in the game, but still seems kind of random. Ah, Wiggum is there, so maybe he'll have insight into the complex narrative. Of course he won't. Excuse me, Chief Wiggum, can you help? I've got to find my brother. Ah, uh, sorry, little girl. I'm busy collecting evidence on Jailbird. We're busting him on the three strikes law. How many strikes do you have so far? Ah, uh, no strikes. But that's only because I'm a very, very bad cop. Now, first of all, if we're going to go undercover, you will need a disguise. You mean like an eye patch? Hey, good one. <laughs> if we could afford a disguise like that, I wouldn't be getting paid in potato chip coupons. So what disguise do you have? Well, here's one of Ralph's old Halloween costumes. Fine, wait here and I'll get changed. Uh, okay, so I need to be dressed like Blossom for this mission. And I know it's pointless complaining about a 15-year-old game, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'd like to think if you were wearing any costume other than the default, it'd just skip this part. It has to be cool, Lisa. <sighs> Because now we got to drive all the way back to... Here we are! Okay, Wiggum, I'm cool now. So let's catch these quote-unquote jailbirds and... Oh, no, wait. Oh, no, 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 no. <sighs> so let's follow Snake as he slowly putters around the city while we pick up pieces of evidence along the way. Oh, did, did I say slowly? I meant his car is perforated by a thousand speed holes. This is actually incredibly tough because Snake's car, the Bandit, is in fact one of the best in the entire game, whereas Wiggum's squad car is not, and you don't have the option to switch to something else. Regardless, once you get the hang of his route, he'll be behind bars for good this time, and I won't encounter him again for the rest of the game. At all. No way. Don't say that, baby. And strike three, littering. All right, we got all we need on this low life. Now, about your brother. I've seen lots of mysterious government types over at the docks. Uh, maybe they sent him on a nice cruise. They got some great package deals these days. Five buffets per boat inclusive. Thanks, Chief. You are a good cop after all. Ah, you're just saying that. Yes, I am. Shady government types are hanging around the docks? Well, that certainly sounds like a job for a brainy eight-year-old. If you're lacking a good car after having just completed America's scariest Wiggum chases, then call up for a better one via a phone booth. I hope you like your Malibu Stacy Mobile with a side order of fused sailor in it. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know what that was. Now, paying more attention to the mission objective, I think it's a little weird that the sea boat captain is named Captain McAllister. Why am I only hearing about this now? And also, why is he managing a food stand and not the frying Dutchman? Maybe it went out of business. That man ate all our shrimp and two plastic lobsters. Tis no man. Tis a remorseless eating machine. Ah, who cares? Let's talk to this salty old sea barnacle. Chief Wiggum said there was some strange stuff going on around here. Have you noticed anything weird? You know, black sedans, guys with dark glasses? Yar, maybe I've seen something and uh, maybe I haven't. Render me a favor and it might jar me memory. <laughs> what favor? I've got a shipment here of live mackerel. Can ye navigate the fishies to the finest restaurants in the squid board? Those poor fish! I mean, sure I'll help. Alright, so again, Lisa is forced to collect dead animals as a favor to someone else. Again! Which I actually feel bad about. Why can't she like, I, I don't know, have to deliver gazpacho? Once all the radioactive fish have been collected, head back to the uh, chum and surf, or whatever it was called. Ah, thanks for delivering me catch of the day. Now, I can tell ye, I saw your brother. Really? That's great! Aye, he was in a long black limo, and ahoy, there she drove! Alright, now it's time for a little mission I like to call, We Gotta Kill Bart! As stated before, you can't really interact or express yourself in any way in Hit and Run other than destroying cars. So why don't we not reduce it into a fiery ball of destruction? Well, we won't have to. The AI got stuck here and after a while, it simply rams itself into oblivion. And there you go! I barely started the mission and I didn't have to do a damn thing to finish it. And do it really half-assed. That's the American way. Okay, so what does Kevin McAllister have to say about all this? Oh god, I destroyed the limo and killed Bart! Okay, wait! Hold up! One, no you didn't, it destroyed itself. And two, what the fuck? The game acknowledges that? Like, Lisa, you saw the objective screen, you knew what you were getting into. I mean... Ha 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 no murderer ye be. He wasn't in the limo. He got out and he boarded that ship. How can you possibly know that? Why do you know that? Oh man, Lisa's surely gonna pose some questions as to why- No, she doesn't. Can you take me there? Nah, I hate the sea. Okay, gotta love the consistency with the sea hatred of the sea captain. I hate the sea and everything. Now, this is Lisa's final mission, and it's one of the weirdest in the game. Bart is located on the giant boat, but you can't seemingly access it via car, so you have to sort of board it by foot, but unlike most locations, this thing is massive and has dozens of uh, shipping containers and shit, it's teetering on maze-like. Just feels like such an out-of-place objective, but eh, who cares. Hey, there's our spiky-headed devil! Bart! Bart! Snap out of it! Oh, I gotta wake him up. Bart, how old are you? What's your favorite catchphrase? Kiss my grits. It's no use. His brain is even more broken than usual. All I can do is take you home and get you a diaper. And that's really it. Bart seems to have suffered some really debilitating mental damage and Lisa can't really do anything about it. She made a few snide remarks about Bart during this adventure, but now faced with the reality of this situation, it's kind of a huge downer. Thanks for tuning in to Simpsons Reference, featuring The Hit and Run, Part 3. Stay tuned for the next episode, and I hope you enjoyed all the laughs and mayhem. Quiet, you awful man! 